Good afternoon and welcome to Pontypool Park, a fine setting in which to play rugby football, what you might call, I suppose, a natural arena. Well, here we are in Monmouthshire, but I'm sure that a lot of people in Mid Glamorgan this afternoon are saying about time too, because for the first time this season, we shall be watching my steg. At present, riding cock of the hoop at the top of the Welsh club's unofficial championship table and with an unbeaten record to boot. Their opponents this afternoon, Pontypool, are enjoying the melancholy distinction of being right at the other end of the table, propping everybody else up. And I don't suppose really that many people would give them much chance of moving off that bottom rung this afternoon. However, we shall see. But this Pontypool side is coached by the former Pontypool and Wales and British Lions top Ray Prosser, one of the great characters of rugby football, talking to Alf Hewitt, the chairman of the Pontypool club. And I know that the two of them and the boys of the team uh, would join in sending their best regards to their former teammate Roger Addison, who's watching this game, I know, from Ward 8 in Rookwood Hospital in Cardiff. For Pontypool, the captain Terry Cobner, who played at flank for Wales under 25 against Fiji, is in the centre today, wearing number 13, partnering Keith Lear, and Noel Williams will be leading the pack from the flank position. He'll be wearing number 7, with a beard, Noel. My stage's captain Leighton Davis, wearing number 7, he'll be a flanker. And this team includes two internationals, Chico Hopkins at scrum half and David Thomas on the left wing. Now he got a cap against Ireland in 1961. Billy Upton, a Wales B-team player, wears number 13 and he'll be at right centre. Number 14 then, Chris Burgess to kick off for Pontypool with Meisteg aiming to stretch their unbeaten run to 17 matches. And Pontypool still chasing a second victory of the season. Right over the Meisteg try line. Meisteg in the thick hooped shirts and the dark shorts, playing from right to left. Pontypool wearing white shorts, don't forget. Mayer drops out. And as the packs go down, you'll see in the Pontypool side, the hooker Wally Talbot with props to Taylor. And Graham Price will be wearing number one. They make up the front row. Roger Williams and John Davis locking four and five. Look out for them. Well, here's the first emergency of the game for my stake. Right in front of their own post. Number 14, Chris Burgess, coming up to take this penalty for Pontypool. This could be a sensational opening to the game. 20 yards out and dead in front. Chris Burgess then, 22 years old, student, Carleon College, attempting to open the score for Pontypool, and he has, 3-0. Chris Burgess, Pontypool's right wing, opens the score after just a minute to put his side 3-0 up. Well, a quick reverse then for my stag, the top of the table side, Mayer kicked off for them. That's Cobner. Oh, he's bounced off. That's Noel Williams in support. Back to Cobner. Just behind Lear, number 12. Lear. Burgess on the opposite wing. Oh, it's a yard short. There'll have to be a scrum. A great attack by Pontypool. So that's twice my stag have been rocked back in these first couple of minutes of the game. A penalty to nil, trailing already, and now they're a yard from their own line. Ray Hopkins feeds the scrum. Mayor's kick is not in touch. Yes, it is. Useful kick there, 30 yards from a narrow angle. Number seven at the back for Pontypool on the left. Noel Williams leading the pack in front of him. Chris White wearing number eight. In front of him, Terry Richards, number six. The two locks, Roger Williams, four, and John Davis, five. Fred Phillips throws in. Hopkins. That's Corsi falling there, Pontypool's new scrum half. First game today.
Must have been a hand down in the ruck there. Another penalty conceded by my Steg. And number 14, Chris Burgess, is coming across to the opposite wing to have a go. The distance then, allowing for the angle, all of 35 yards. 19 minutes gone, Chris Burgess with three points under his belt already. Doubles it. 6-0 to Pontypool. 19 minutes, there's the kicker, number 14 for Pontypool there, right wing Chris Burgess. And my goodness, the championship leaders know they're in a game now. Graham there then kicking off for Maesteg with his side now trailing 6-0 down. Gathered by John Davis for Pontypool. A shapely maul form there. This is Burgess in the line. The kick ahead is meant for Fred Phillips on the left. All taken by Norman Davis. Number four for my stake is up there. Billy Howe. It's good to see a lock, lock act active in the open. Upton gathers for my stake. Griffiths. Here's Leighton Davis, the My State captain underway. This is David Thomas, number 11, into the 25, across the 25 line. Number six, Ralph Evans is there in support and just beaten to it by Fred Phillips for Pontypool. A fine bit of anticipation by him, Pontypool's left wing. But the home side have had to yield this scrum just three or four yards from their own line. Hopkins feeds the scrum for my stay. It isn't in. <laughs> Several sorts of dummies going on by my stay, but they didn't need any of them. An offence of the set. And you can see very well how close that is to the my stake posts. Ten yards or less out. And Bob Bassett, number 14, number 15 for my stake. Their fullback is up there to take the kick. Bob Bassett is a policeman. He's 26. He's in his third season with my stake. And the most important thing, he already has... 83 points to his name this season, 77 of them with this boot of his. And that was, must have been one of the easiest of the lot. That gives him 86 points for the season, it gives my stake three for this afternoon and cuts back the deficit just a bit. Bob Bassett, my stake's fullback, the man who reduced his size deficit, kicked a penalty to make it 6-3. This line-out then is five yards from my stakes, 25. That's meant for Leighton Davis. He finds Hopkins and Mayer, Upton. This is uh, Barry Herbert having to go back for Pontypool. I think he aimed for touch, but the kick is into the drops into the middle of the field. Hopkins finally picking up number nine for my stake, Upton. Oh, he's taken by Cobner. No mistake. That's Noel Williams, number seven for Pontypool, there too. Number six is Terry Richards. And the covering is done rather untidily, tidily but effectively in the end by Norman Davis. My stakes right wing. My stake back in their own 25, just 15 yards from their line. What's remarkable is how even the play has been. My stake have not been allowed to get properly into their stride. Corsi feeds the scrum. Not straight. Chico Hopkins took that very, very quickly, caught everybody by surprise. Looks good. 
but it's faded slightly. Less than five minutes to go till half time now. The play just inside the my stake half. Hopkins there. Herbert is there for Pontypool. A good pickup. Lucky to get a second chance. Thomas and Griffiths on top of him for my stake. Front for my stake with his number hanging off, Paul Davis, the hooker. Billy Howe behind him, Sherrard, Broughton. Broughton's up for it now, a nice tap, but the ball wasn't straight. Three minutes to half time. The scrum is 15 yards from the Pontypool 25. It's Corsi Feeney it for them. He's harassed by Hopkins. Cole trying to pick up. Um, Leighton Davis has to do the job in the end. Dummy scissors. Cobner, 13 for Pontypool. Cobner is leading his other backs up very, very swiftly on the mistake backs. There's a lot of great destruction work going on there. Two minutes to go to half-time, the scrum is on the Pontypool 10-yard line now. Chunky Chico Hopkins straightening it, number nine, in the dark shorts. Mayor is 10. John Davis under it but not holding it. Leighton Davis up for the attack. This is Norman Davis, 14 for my stake. And that's Pole on the move. Well, Burgess is in trouble there. He's got Cobner helping him. And Herbert's in trouble on his own line. Hands in the air for my stake, but uh, Coolidge says the ref and come back five yards. So as we go into injury time, Pontypool still holding on to this narrow lead. Six points to three, two penalties to one. Mostyn Richards, their fly half with the clearing kick. The line out is about 12 yards from the Pontypool line. How trying to get it away from my stake from that line out wearing number four. So, with a minute of injury time gone, Corsi to feed the scrum for Pontypool. 15 yards from their line. Against the head for Meisteg. This is Upton dropping for goal. And getting there. A good, fine, clean kick. Billy Upton, number 30 in the Meisteg centre, has put the scores level in injury time during the first half. Two minutes into injury time now as Burgess restarts for Pontypool. Bassett gathers for my stake, the fullback. On the right at the front for my stake is uh, Big Billy, ha Billy Howe, six foot three, fifteen and a half stone. Sherrard is the supporter wearing three behind him. That went down to Cole. Mayor's kick back. Meant for David Thomas. And we're now coming up to three minutes of injury time at this line out just outside the Meistag 10-yard line. That's Graham Price, number one, working hard for Pontypool. Hopkins gets his kick in. In spite of the attentions of Wally Talbot, uh, Pontypool's hooker, number two, and he's going to throw in at this line -out. Seven Pontypool forwards. Oh, a good jump by John Davis.
Nearly four minutes of injury time gone in this first half. Chris Corsi, the Pontypool scrum half. That's a third one in ten minutes against the head for my stake. Hopkins is the kicker. And the marker is Barry Herbert, Pontypool's fullback. That's the kind of noise that a pack likes to hear when the ball has been booted over their heads. Good safe catch by Barry Herbert. You'll have to chase that one. Oh, my stake made the mistake of letting it bounce. Almost always a very dangerous thing to do. That's Jeff Taylor chasing hard, the prop for Pontypool. This is Corsi going to be under it. Number six driving on for my stake is Ralph Evans, backed up by Billy Howell. And there's the whistle for half-time, a remarkably even first half when you consider that the top of the table is playing the bottom here. Well, Pontypool have held their own in most departments of the play. And there is the score at half-time, six points apiece. Pontypool six, my stake six. Raymond Hopkins, as they're always very careful to call him at my stake, to begin the second half. With his team needing to do a lot in this second half to show the kind of reason why they're at the top of this Welsh table. And what's Mostyn Richards going to do? Well, there's the answer. It'll be a dropout. Yes, they're saying at my stake that this start to the season has been their best run since their great invincible season, 49-50. They did go 17 matches without defeat a couple of years ago, but uh, this has been their best start to a season. They've yet to show us, really, why they deserve to be up there at the top. The marker, Mustin Richards. The bearded Pontypool fly half. 19 years old. Under pressure from Jim Anderson, who's been in rugby 10 years longer than him, getting the kick in. Jim Anderson returning to the lineout, standing number five for my stay, crouched there. Played for the Wales under 23 15 against Canada as long ago as 1962. Broughton failing number five for my stay. And the cry there is over the top, and my stake have rucked it by doing just that. Upton against Cobner, the two 13s. Griffiths. Defending sides ball, I would guess, in a somewhat untidy situation like that. No, he's given it to my stake. Must have been a knock on by Cobner as he jumped for that ball. Hopkins feeding this set scrum for my stake. 20 yards from the Pontypool post and right in front, too. Tense situation for Pontypool. Their defence will be stretched to the full mare. Come on now! Continuing the break. Couldn't get there. The pass was forward. The pass was forward. David Thomas, my stakes left wing, crossed the line, but the pass to him from the fly half Graham Mayer was a foot or two forward. Furthermore, if you argue with the ref, it profits you nothing and it yielded a kick with which Pontypool will clear some of the pressure. Mustin Richards with the kick. The my stake pack in the dark shorts on the left. Leighton Davis, their captain, right at the back weighing up the positions of the Pontypool halfbacks that he's marking. 
Six in front of him is Ralph Evans, the other flanker. Oh, a feed from Sherrard to Hopkins to Mayer. The fullback's in the line. Clearing kick by Herbert. from the Pontypool line. The tap was from Richards. This is Davis on the move, number five, with a headband. Oh, look at that. That was up to the real back from that, number 13 for Maistega, and it's Bassett who has to gather. Looking for support, Maistega a little slow getting back there. Pontypool are all there. But Maistega have it, that's Hopkins. Chip into the box. And it's Burgess who side-footed it into touch for Pontypool. It seems that Maistag have been recharged, at, uh, charged their batteries at half-time because they virtually set siege to the Pontypool 25. But Sherrard doing the holding job. And number four for Pontypool, getting onto the wrong side of the, uh, of the mall, getting away with it. Still 20 yards from the Pontypool try line Hopkins. Feeds the scrum, looks for it to Mayer. Well, again, Pontypool up very, very quickly. Here goes Leah Codner. Oh, that's right up with the attack. Here's the back row, Richards to his brother, Austin Richards, for fly half. The kick is into the Fred Phillips chasing it into the 25. A chance to fall. He may have got it. The referee has given it. Fred Phillips. A try which Pontypool can be very pleased with because it came all the way from their own line. Nine six then after five and a half minutes of the second half. Nine six to the home side Pontypool. Chris Burgess then just a yard from touch and the spot he's picked is. Four or five yards outside the 25, attempting, attempting the conversion of that fine try by Fred Phillips of Pontypool. Burgess, who's kicked two penalties already. He's pulled that one. Five and a half minutes into the second half then, after the failure of that uh, conversion, Maistake trailing again, this time 9-6. Ball didn't travel ten yards. And Pontypool must be very pleased with themselves because that try ended a sustained period of pressure which occupied the first full five minutes of the uh, second half by my stake. This is Corsi, their scrum half, number nine, to feed the set scrum. That was foot up. Well, the position is the halfway line. And Ray Hopkins is indicating the post, so he's going to have a go. And there it is, all of it, 55 yards of it. He needs to hit this hard. Mustin Richards, again touching down for Pontypool. Number 10 for Pontypool, Mustin Richards, their fly half to drop out. And uh, in spite of his holding the ball high, one or two of his forwards transgressed, got themselves in front. The scrum then is right in front of the Pontypool posts. There. Leighton Davis, Ralph Evans, six for my stake moving forward. Fifteen yards from Pontypool's line, Ray Hopkins, my stake's vice captain, feeding the scum. Pole is the breaker. 
Evans, Mayer, Upton, Griffiths. There should be an overlap. He's only got to go there. He must get there. He's in. David Thomas has put the scores level. A fine, enterprising piece of back play by my stake. Finishing with a classical try by the wing in the corner. Good to watch. The score's then tied. Bob Bassett, who kicked a penalty goal earlier, seeking to nudge his side in front. So the scores remain level at 9 all. Well, a bit of argument there between Leighton Davis, the Maistake captain, and the referee. A most unusual incident because a kick has been awarded to Pontypool immediately following the failure of that conversion. And uh, Burgess is going to have a go from uh, a foot inside the Maistake half. Six inches, maybe. Chris Burgess, number 14, a most unusual penalty attempt immediately on the resumption of play. It's long, but it's just short. Leighton Davis, my stage captain, gathering. This is Herbert. Anderson gathering, number one, and immediately in trouble. Look at that point of pool pack arriving. But again, the, the ball has gone to ground. And uh, if only some of them had managed to stay on their feet, the ball might have come back. Pontypool then showing that they can still come back, have established themselves now a couple of yards inside the my stake 25 as Chico Hopkins slips it back to his fly half partner, Graham Mayer. His is the clearing kick. My stake pack getting plenty of exhortation and encouragement from its captain, their captain Leighton Davis, who's at the end of the line, marking Noel Williams, who's leading the Pontypool pack. Noel Williams there with a the beard. That's Leighton Davis handing the ball to Raymond Hopkins, his vice-captain. This is for the mice take forwards to chase. Herbert must be under it, and is. He's got to chase that one. Anderson, number one, covering for mice take. This is Bassett in possession. Hopkins. This is Richards. Kicked that one off balance, and... Um, didn't go quite where he intended to and he was lucky that Ray Hopkins gathered that and took himself into touch Price at the front for Pontypool Davis behind him Taylor Roger Williams that was a tap by Terry Richards the brother of the fly half Mostyn Richards playing on the flank oh a magical ball by my stake Hopkins into the 25 Herbert falls Anderson's there, so is Hopkins, this is their number eight pole, up to the Pontypool line, five yards out, Paul Davis, and the linesman's flag is up five yards out from the Pontypool line. Number three, going back to his place in the MyStake line, Terry Sherrard, British police player, adding strength and experience to the middle of the, the line there he'd be backing Billy Howe who's standing number one and it's Howe nearly there but uh, the referee saw that knock on by him this is the position then from which my stake won a perfect ball about ten minutes ago 
and it all ended up with a great try in the corner by David Thomas. They'll have their, uh, their sights set on another achievement like that from this position. What they have won, though, is a penalty for a crooked feed to the set. And it looked from the grouping of the forwards, you'd imagine they might be thinking about running this. But the referee's arm indicates what they have chosen. Ten minutes to go as Ray Hopkins uh, prepares to take this kick. The score's tied, and here he goes. It's not going to be there, but he is going to drop in an awkward spot for Pontypool. Oh, a good catch by John Davis for Pontypool. And here he is in, again in the line. That's Lear, the centre. And again, the, there are so many players on the ground at the ruck. How that came back, I'll never know. Mayor to Upton. Less than ten minutes to go. There's a score, 9-9. My stake must be wondering if they're going to hold on to this unbeaten record in this ordeal at Pontypool Park. Well, at this very late stage, it looks as if that try by left-wing David Thomas has uh, saved the day for my stake. It's been as tight as that. Have the my stake forward some last trick they can pull out of the bag. Leighton Davis, their captain at the end there. Must be hoping. Hopkins to there. This is Upton. The kick is meant for David Thomas, the try scorer. And that was straight into touch. And uh, <laughs> that was a decision the crowd have enjoyed. Never a game remarkable for high skill and um, spectacular thrust, but always full of effort and endeavour, and always hard. Some hard knocks given and taken. The thrower in is Chris Burgess with four minutes gone of injury time. Hopkins couldn't gather, not surprisingly. And um, Richards and White were onto him in that Pontypool back row. The uh, throw at the line-out was not straight. This scrum is just inside the Pontypool 10-yard line. Four and a half minutes of injury time gone. Hopkins to Mayer, to Upton, to Glyn Griffiths. Norman Davis. And the Pontypool defence is there. Now they've got to move the other way. That's how. Leighton Davis and Lear in collision. Lear's foot cross, gets the ball across the my stake, across the halfway line brings Bassett into play, the mice take fullback, and pretty well all he can do is uh, shift it into touch on the full, so the line-out is back where he kicked from. I wouldn't say that uh, my stake have already have, have been under terribly heavy, heavy pressure this half. On the other hand, they've really looked like breaking down the heroic Pontypool defence. Yes, the referee looking at his watch as well he may because uh, we've had over five minutes, well over five minutes of injury time. Still the score's tied, 9-9. Nine, nine. Can my stake hold on? Can Pontypool earn themselves the most honourable draw you can imagine? This is Mayer, the fly half on the blind side. I wonder if Leighton Davis is on side. Yes, he is, as he makes that crushing tackle on Lear. Good piece of rucking by my stake. Hopkins. The ball's in touch on the full. <laughs> and the last seconds of the game must be approaching. Here they are, the two packs who've gone at each other so heroically. The two hookers at the front. Paul Davis on the left, standing off for my stake. Wally Talbot is throwing in. Good jump there by Roger Williams for Pontypool. And look at the ferocity of this ruck, even at this late stage in the game. My stake would still like to pull something out of the bag and earn themselves a 16th victory of the season. They must be feeling very nettled that uh, they can't put it over this bottom of the table opposition this afternoon. But 
One imagines that Pontypool must have played well above themselves. Upton in the center. Leah chasing him and takes him. That's Cobner. Richards in support. This is into the Mystag half. Back pedaling Mystag. David Thomas side foots. It's all over. It's all over. And the top of the table team have held on to their unbeaten record. But my goodness. What a magnificent afternoon's work by Terry Cobner's bottom of the table, Pontypool. The score, Maestag 9, Pontypool 9. Comments by Pontypool, who left the field to a delirious reception from their supporters. Maestag, I thought, looking just a bit dejected to have been held, but still, they know better than anyone else, it's tough at the top. Well now, next Tuesday is a special day in the rugby calendar, the annual Vasti match between Oxford and Cambridge. And the special interest for us in Wales this year is that Welsh international Gerald Davis will... Comments which suggest that we can look forward to a very exciting varsity match. And you can see it, incidentally, on BBC Wales next Tuesday. Well, our next match, a week today, is the first Welsh trial at Stradi Park, Llanelli. Probables against possibles. Join us to see it next Sunday. Until then, goodbye. Upton. Hovner again right on the scene of the uh, attack and nipping it in the bud this is here number 12 for Pontypool backed up by Richards 